Well, Father, we love you so much, Father. We just bless you right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh, thank you, Father. You are so good. You're so worthy of praise, God. You're so worthy right now, God. We just take time to exalt you and lift you up this evening, Father. God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness, Father. We thank you, Father God, for your healing virtue, Father. We thank you that you're the God of miracles. You're the God of the Bible. We believe the Bible. Hallelujah. We believe the Word of God. We believe even the maps on the back, Father God. We believe, Father God. God, we thank you right now for your precious Word. Jesus, you said you are the Word. You're the living Word. So we thank you right now that we will lift you up, Jesus. We will lift up your precious name. We will lift you up, our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, we will love on you. We will glorify you, Father. We promise to give you the glory, Father, for all the good that you'll do tonight, Father. Everything we learn, everything we, that is illuminated by precious Holy Spirit, all of it, Father, we give you the glory. Right now, Father, we give you praise, Father. We just thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. And Holy Spirit, we, in, we invite you into this place right now, Holy Spirit. We thank you for greater waves of glory. We thank you right now, Holy Spirit, for your mighty presence. We thank you that the well that we've been digging is deep in the things of God. We thank you what happened in SEAL training. We thank you, Father, what happened, Lord God, as we just began to pray and intercede, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that all the fasting we've done, Lord, the fasting in January, the fasting in September, Father, we thank you, Lord, right now, Lord. Thank you for allowing us the pleasure of digging this well in the Spirit through prayer, Father. Oh, we thank you. We thank you right now, Father. We glorify you. You're so worthy, God. You're worthy of our time. You're worthy of our talent. You're worthy of our energy. You're worthy of our finances. You're worthy of our, Lord, our mental capacity. You're worthy, Father God, of everything, Father. You're so worthy, Father. We are blood-bought children of the Most High God. We thank you right now. Father, before we go into this study, God, if there be anyone we need to forgive, anyone, Lord God, that just seems to be coming up in our spirit and we have negative thoughts and negative feelings towards, we thank you for complete deliverance and healing right now. We thank you in the name of Jesus right now, Father, for just complete deliverance from anger, from hate, from unforgiveness. I thank you that, there, that if there be anyone tonight, Lord, that needs to forgive themselves, Lord, they've been hard on themselves. Forgive themselves right now. We forgive ourselves in Jesus' name. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you. Just like Jesus said, he has nothing Satan has nothing in me. So I just thank you, Father, that we, that, that we can declare that Satan has nothing in us, Lord God. We just thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father. So anoint this study, Father. Anoint us, Lord. Anoint our ears to hear. Anoint our minds and our hearts, our spirit man to receive. That we would leave full this evening, Father. I thank you that food cannot dominate my body. That, that food cannot dominate my sugar levels. I thank you that I'm wide awake, Lord God. I'm alert. I'm sensitive to your Holy Spirit. So we thank you right now. We bless you. Bless you right now, Father. We love you, love you, love you, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. 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 Thank you, oh God. We worship you. We worship you. 
In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Um, you know, we asked the question, um, you know, last week, and, uh, you know, our homework was, you know, can you, can you give three ingredients, um, like from reading the scriptures? Like I said, it didn't have to be in the, uh, in the book of Matthew. Could have been anywhere in the Bible, but, you know, can um, anybody give us some, uh, and I know some of you will overlap on, on what you say, it's okay, but, but let's just discuss it, you know, anything that was highlighted that you want to share, amen? Well, what showed up multiple times is crying out to the Lord. Okay, so the scripture reference would be what? Uh, Psalm 103, I believe, let me check my phone. Okay. And you said these are three ingredients, I'm sorry about the hearing. Oh, okay, my bad. Um, Excuse me, Psalm 107. Psalm 107. Yeah, three, the ingredients of healing, like some ingredients of healing. So, for example, faith is an ingredient of healing. You know, so, so, yes. And that was verse 19 through 21. And then um, going to the church elders to pray over us and anoint us with oil in Jesus' name. Okay, so with Psalms 107, right? Verse 19, Verse 19 through, 21. through 21 says what? What does you it say? Yeah, I want you to read it. Oh, okay. Here we go. Okay, it says, Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. Hallelujah. He sent out his word and healed them. And rescued them from the grave. Okay, so he sent his word. So so the ingredient that you said there was that he cried out. Right. He cried, they, they cried out, the, God's children cried out, and he heard them, mm -hmm. and then he sent his word and healed them. Okay, right. all right, all right. Let's, let's do another one. Hold on, hold on, let's do some. Anyone else got another one? Anyone? Yeah, you could go ahead, share. Okay. Mm. So there would be a desire. Okay. A want. Yeah. Okay. I don't yeah. know the verse of scripture that says it's a desire. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to be healed? Yeah. You know. Or did he did he say that or did he say, what is it that you want me to do for you? No. He said, he do you want? Him, do you want to be healed? Do you want to be healed? Different translation kind of comes okay. the same way when you said it. Right. Sounds the same thing. Okay. But the presentation. Yeah. Is what do you want? Right. What do you want from me is what you said. So so there was a, so in that moment, the Lord would would want him to speak the desire, okay. to speak it out. Right. Because there's power in what we say. That's another thing about um, God not forcing his way on nobody. Mm -hmm. What do you want? Right. I'm here. Do you want it? Right. And just like um, our prayer sometimes. We don't always pray because we don't want what we know the will of God is. Mm-hmm. Flesh doesn't always want what the spirit wants, and so here he is asking, "Do you want? Okay. Want to be healed? Okay. Do you want to be healed? Okay. So yeah. So desire. Uh, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. Okay. She she didn't have the she didn't have the exact scripture reference. Sounds like a Matthew. What does that say? Mm -hmm. So in that verse, he's telling us it's, it's willing, being, uh, uh, believing and willing that God will okay. heal you. Okay. And he, he, uh, he was willing, and God says, be clean mm. immediately. I love he that. He that uh, he was willing. Okay, so that's Matthew 8, verses eight, 1, and verses two. 1 and 2. Excellent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Come on, Mel, give me one. You, you're a good studier on healing. Give me... Give me an ingredient, yeah, of, of, of healing that you've read. An ingredient or a scripture? 
You can give me a scripture. Because um, in the scripture, we'll find the ingredient. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so your faith has made you whole. Okay, okay. Okay. Go ahead, Alice. All right. Matthew nine eighteen through sixteen. Okay. Mhm. Mm Matthew chapter nine verse eighteen through twenty-six. A dead girl and a sick woman. Mhm. Yes. Yeah, the, so the woman with the uh, issue of blood. Jesus turned and saw her in verse 22. It says, take heart, daughter. He said, your faith has healed you or made you whole. And the woman was healed from that moment. So, praise God. Scripture that goes along with that with the, um, the servant that came to Jesus. And he said, Jesus didn't go with him. He said, come to my house. And Jesus mm. came and he said, your you, your faith is greater than any we've seen. Your son is healed. Go home. Right, right. Awesome. Okay. Well, an, an ingredient was there, faith there, but, I, but also in the release, one thing we want to see is, so for example, this, this is good to see. So with the woman with the issue of blood, she had faith. The faith is what made her whole, but it was action that she did. So she said within herself, if I just touch the hem of his garment, you know, I'll be made whole, okay? And then so in Matthew, um, in Matthew 8, um, it, uh, it says, uh, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man in verse 3. And so it was Jesus reaching out, or so we see that the laying on of hands, Jesus laid hands in that situation. So one, somebody just in faith touched him, mm -hmm. but then... You know, and everything that you read about Jesus, just remember this, when you read something about Jesus or Jesus' lifestyle, that is a correlation for us. That is, that is a correlation that as sons and daughters that we can operate in that. So we can operate in that. So, so that's, that's really important. So one of them is that somebody, you know, I've had, you know, in prayer, people have come to me and, and I've seen strong faith on people that I'm going to get healed right now, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I was talking to my friend Luis Mendez and, um, you know, we, w he, was, he was present during uh, one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen when I, when I prayed over someone. And I was talking to him and then I c had completely forgotten because his daughter's getting married. I told him I couldn't make the wedding and, and, uh, and he had reminded me about his ankle you know, and um, I was there when he rolled his ankle and um, it was it was pretty nasty. Just, I hate that sound. And because uh, I heard it and um, and uh, he came to the altar and he literally said, Pastor, pray for me. The Lord's going to heal me. <laughs> and you know what? And man, I just prayed for him real fast and he just walked away and he, and he said, I'm still healed. I have no pain in that ankle. So it's just, you know, he came, you know, in faith. And, and other times we could see someone and put our hands on them. Amen. Tramel, give me something, buddy. Give me, give me, give me anything, something you've, you've read that you could remember even that, that, that. Yeah. Lazarus was raised from the dead, right? So, so Lazarus was dead. So let me ask you this. So whose faith was it? that started start started that whole process cuz he was in the tomb dead come on now that's right his sister was praying right so she went to Jesus and said you know the one you love right well she actually if i'm not mistaken i think they sent a servant to tell Jesus the one you love is dead, right? So, so there was an outreach for Jesus, and um, you know, so that that's a good one. That that's a good one. All right, come on, Peggy, give me something. Well, I was thinking about in the Old Testament to worship. Mmm, that's good.
And while she's looking that up, I want to say what you said, Tremel, about Lazarus. So he did not lay his hands on Lazarus. This is a good one that you brought this up because it's different. He spoke to Lazarus to come forth. So in faith, what did they do? They removed the stone because it wasn't that Lazarus was knocking on the stone. So Lazarus wasn't there like, oh, wait a minute, we can hear him. Let's move the, the stone. They moved the stone first. Come on now. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. So there was faith in action. Again, there was a process of faith to move the stone. And then Jesus spoke to Lazarus. He did not lay hands on him. He did not lay hands on him. He just spoke it. So that's good. Somebody, somebody reached out their faith for him. Another situation, Jesus laid his hands on the person, you know, um, and... You know, the, and then we have him speaking to Lazarus. So that's good. We can't overlook Job. We're we'll talking about healing. We can't overlook Job. Yeah. Is that a healing? Okay. Job was healed. Job was healed. Yeah. Job was healed. His finances was healed. His everything about it. His sure. Everything was healed. Everything. Mm. Absolutely. That's what a good one. He said. Yeah. Testament uh, due to obedience and listening to the prophet. That's mm. uh, Second Kings uh, chapter five. It talks about Naaman the leper. Okay. And he was told to Excellent. go dip. Mm. Not four, not three, but seven times in the Jordan. Naaman was yeah. told to dip by the prophet. That is yeah. awesome. That is so good. So. Obedience to a word of knowledge or word of instruction, you know, so, so we see that the Lord, that's an excellent example because look at that. It's, it's all different. All you guys have given a different one, one laying the hands, one speaking it, one, you know, uh, they came and touched, touched the hem of his garment. Another, he obeyed the prophet, you know, so. So the Bible says if you believe, if you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you'll get a prophet's reward. Okay, so that's, that's really good. Amen. What do you got, Sister Peggy? Exodus 23, uh -huh. verses 25 to, 26. 25 to 26. So worship is what caused the healing there. Wow. So so how many is that? Like that's literally like we just named like six, right? Six different ways that the Lord healed and several different kinds of ingredients. Worship, faith, of course, you know, saying, um, you know, Pull, you know, uh, uh, Mary sent a servant to go tell Jesus, the one you love, so compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion on that. What were you going to say, Sister Alice? Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, okay. Do you have one? I got one. Which one was that one? I thought you were piggybacking off of Sharon's one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might have had the same one. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And it says, when Jesus had, when Jesus heard what happened, uh, Matthew 14, 13. Okay. When Jesus heard what happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place, hearing a bit. The crowd followed him on one foot from the town. And he had compassion on them, it says, mm -hmm. and he healed all their sick. So, so what was the... So, so check this out. This is important. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Because compassion, I was going to bring this up later on in another teaching, but compassion, when God highlights someone to you, when your heart is drawn to them, mm -hmm. that is a telltale sign that the Lord <clears throat> is having you minister to them or wants you to minister to them. Your heart, you know, will go out to them. 
you know so 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 let me let me let me just say this to you let me tell you what what happened today right so i went to the to the uh waiting room and so tasia's there all her family's there <clears throat> and his mom her mom so tasia had told me to have people praying for her mom she didn't ask me to come okay but I came, I walked right in, I went right to her mom and I started praying. Because I don't know, I could just tell that they were probably going to move her soon. I could sense that. So I didn't even chit chat. I went to her, gave her a hug and I said, I, I need to pray for you. We started praying, right? So we prayed, the Holy Spirit was strong in there. We just prayed, we didn't care who was watching. <clears throat> and there was an old man right in front, like I'm talking about, I'm, I'm standing right here, Miss Naomi's in the chair. He's sitting right there watching the whole thing. So he has a hole in his throat. You know, he's, he talks with one of the, one of the little voice box thingies. <clears throat> and, um, and he just looks at me and he smiles. And then his uh, daughter came. I could tell it was his daughter. And then so, so the thing is, I said, I asked him, I said, are you here to have a procedure done? So he said, no, he says, my wife is. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, I said, what's, what's she having? He says, well, they're, they're you know, removing. Hey, guys. Yay. Hey. Let my people, hey. let my people go is here. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm so happy to see you guys. For those that are listening to the recording, Marcus and LaDonna just walked in late, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on blast. It's on CDs now and everything. So, so, so he said that my wife is having a hysterectomy. I said, so she's in surgery right now, and he said, yeah. I said, well, I said, well, let's pray for her. So, so this is cool because, and so I grabbed his hand, but the daughter grabbed my hand, and now Lewis. I didn't ask Lewis to come over, but now Lewis comes over. And joins hands. And then Michelle comes over and she's putting hands on me. And I said, so we started speaking to the doctors, you know, that they would guide, that their hands would be guided and that she's in, she's perfect, that this is textbook, that she's okay. And, um, and um, you know, there's no distance in the spirit that as we pray, the Lord's in there with her. You know, man, you could just see that the husband, they've been married 62 years. Wow. And you could just see his heart you know, just received that prayer because he was worried, yeah. you know. And uh, it was so cool because later on the doctor came and he walked in and he looked at me and he goes, like that. <laughs> <laughs> right. He put his thumb up and yeah. smiled. Yeah. So then another lady walks in and another lady walks in and she sits down and she's got back pains for sure. I said, how did you hurt your back? You know, um, and, and I, I said, how did you hurt your back? And she, she said, I got hit from behind. I said, okay, so what did I do? I said, can I sit next to you? So she said, yeah. I said, can I tell you a story? So, I, so, I t so three people all in one, like in one little space, yeah. you know, right there. And so, so I said, you know, this is how the Lord healed my back. So check this out. Laid hands on her, prayed for her. Me and Lewis start praying for her. I don't know. If, oh, and then her parents were there, so they came and joined in. So now we're praying, right? <clears throat> and... um. But here's the thing, I told her to do something and she was too afraid. And she says, no, I don't think I can make it over there. And you know what? And I was just feeling she just needed to take a step. Right. She, needed to, she needed to take a step. So um, I just said, walk over to that coffee machine. I said, just step out in faith, you know? And she's just like, but I feel a little bit, you know? And it's just like, man, I'm telling you, and I've seen many a time where you have to just take the step of faith, right. you know, on both ends, yeah. Yeah. from the from the person praying mm -hmm. and the person receiving. In this case, you know, and so I was just like, oh, man. And I said, well, listen, I said, in Jesus' name, you're going to feel better, you know. Mm -hmm. I just speak that over you. And so, but, you know, man, I was just thinking she's got to take that step of faith. Right. You know, she's got to just take a st one step. And she wasn't even willing to take the one step. You know, so I was like, oh, man, but it's OK, you know, but 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 so the thing is. So. Was there anything 
So this is a teaching moment. So was there anything evident in that moment instantly? And the answer is no. Because the, the, the wife was already in surgery, so I don't know, but we, I know God heard us. Mm -hmm. I know God heard us with, the, uh, with Miss Naomi. Mm -hmm. And I know that God heard us with, with um, the lady with the back issue, mm -hmm. you know. But so here's the thing. But what begins to happen is that your faith begins to grow, your, your, your reliance on God. And, and, and now you, you're drawing other people in. And, and so I didn't tell those people to come in agreement with me, but they just saw me and they just instantly came into agreement because they saw the action of it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a great, it's just the more, the more you step out in faith, the more God begins to, to back you up. So sometimes, so like, so like for example, um, you know, it's just a funny example, but we were talking about the food, you know, like the food, you eat the food, it starts to hit you, right? You can't go by how you feel. You have to go by the word and you have to go by faith because you could feel, you could feel angry. You could feel hungry. You can feel hangry. You can feel all kinds of different things. But when you step out on faith, and you step out, you could have had a long day, you could be all this, but when you step out on faith, it's unbelievable how, how God is there when you step out in faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want you to go to, um, any comments on that as we turn to Mark 16? Mark 16, any, any comments at all? <clears throat> Anybody at all? Okay. Now, put your finger on Mark 16. I got to give you guys something that doesn't flow with the topic of what we're talking today, but I do need to build faith in, in some people in this area. Um, I just want you to study the scriptures because I do believe through years and years of teaching some of us, we still believe God will put sickness. God will, will try to teach you something. God will whatever. So let's, let's go by the words of Jesus. So in verse 22 of Matthew 12, Matthew chapter 12. I'll wait a moment. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to read, I'm going to read here verse 22. So then they brought him a demon possessed man who was blind and mute. And Jesus healed him so that he could both talk and see. All the people were astounded and said, Could this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, It is only Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. It's only by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, that he drives out demons. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then can his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons, come on now, by the Spirit of God, capital S, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Jesus doesn't fight his Father. The Holy Spirit doesn't fight Jesus. You know, where God says, hey, I'm going to put this on them. You take it off of them. No, that is a kingdom divided against itself. Even in Satan's own kingdom, Jesus said, That's, they don't function like that because their kingdom won't stand. So his kingdom's not going to stand, you know, with God, with the Trinity fighting against each other. So I'm going to put sickness on you. And then, I'll, and then another part of the Trinity says, okay, well, I'm going to take it off. It's foolish. And even in Jesus' own word, he even says in Satan's realm, he says, there's no way. So, so, Je so Jesus was clearly saying that this man who was blind and mute, so sickness was on this man. God, Jesus, was good, and this is darkness. See what I'm saying? There was no... There was no... Uh, 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 deal making here or anything like that. God is good. The devil is bad. Jesus is good. 
and holy. The devil is evil and dark and, and all of that. So a kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. We have to, we have to get that in our spirit. We have to get, yes, what were we going to say? Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Okay. So go to Mark 16. Mark 16. All right, here we go. We're going to get into some serious scriptures that most of you that have been in church for any period of time probably don't hear these scriptures. Okay, so we're going to go 15. And so Mark 16, 15, who wants to start reading right there? I can read. Okay. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved. But he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then when the, when the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word by signs that followed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I have a little subtext. Do you want it? Okay. No, I don't want okay. it. Yeah. So, and, and, and so he says in 15, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I'm going to read out of the King James. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. These signs will follow them that what though? Come on. These signs will follow them that what? That believe. So, so here is the thing. Here is the thing. When we do these studies, when we talk about these things, we are helping our unbelief. We are dealing with unbelief because the word will bring faith. The word brings faith. When you get it, when you start reading these scriptures, it will build your faith. If you if you don't have faith in the area of healing, listen, this is not a big, this is not a a, a a bad problem where it's like, oh my gosh, you're this, you're that. I can't believe you have no faith. You know, what you need to do is you need to build your faith. Faith is a muscle. Faith is a muscle, and what God is looking for is that what he what he's looking for is would anyone have the desire to minister in this area? Well, I don't have faith. Listen, but build your faith. The Bible says building yourselves up in your most holy faith. Building yourselves up in your most holy faith. Building yourselves up. It comes by the word. When I prayed for those three people today, it's been a long time where in one day I prayed for three people for healing. But you know what it did? It made me hungry to pray for more people for healing. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't worried. I wasn't worried who was listening to me. I, I'm telling you, man, God is dealing with me because I have a big issue and, and God is dealing with me. But I, I, I am very aware of what's around me. And I need to be less aware of what's around me. Like I am too sensitive to what people could think, to what people, you know, all these different things. I'm just way too concerned about what's going on. Oh, am I talking too loud? Or does this look weird? And stuff like that. I, Irwin has to get his mind and self out of it. I have to get self out of the situation. And I have to be, I have to lend my ears to the Spirit of God and I have to be ready to do what he tells me to do. Amen. So, but the more I do it, it builds my faith. See, like, I, like I'm going to tell you something I saw today. M me and Pastor Prince, me and Pastor Prince are going to get together. We're going to walk, we're going to walk down some of the streets in Compton and we're going to see healing. I already saw it in my spirit. I saw in my spirit us coming, praying here. And I said, let's go out. Let's go for a walk. We're going to go minister to people, you know? It's like, you know, like the minute I started praying for this, God started showing me all these different things that I could do. Wow. Amen. Because, because it's just faith. It's, see, this is, let me ask you something. 
Do you really believe that God wants them to be healed more than you do? He does. Yes. He does want them to be healed. He does want them to be healed. He does. And, and, and listen, if you want to continue to bring this question around, but why aren't they healed? This, uh, that's not the question. The question is, is that when I go, Lord, I did, that woman with the back. So, so let me tell you the process here. That woman with the back. She didn't say, whoa. I, I, I feel it. I feel the heat. She didn't say that. Do you know what that causes me to do? It doesn't make me feel bad. The only thing that makes me feel bad is like, I want to see her healed. She was a poor thing. She was suffering. You know, she was only 50, 52 or something like that. And she was suffering so bad. She had a bag of pills and all this stuff. But here's what it causes me to do. You know what I want to do? Now I go into my prayer closet and I say, Daddy God, I said, I'm, I'm going to build my faith. I, wanna, I, like, I don't even want to wait for her to have to take a step. I think she should have taken a step. But you know what? I just want to pray for her and just see it right there. And, 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 what, and if I don't see it again, then I'll go back into my prayer closet and be with the Father. And it's an invitation to go to the Father and, and pursue Him in that area. It's, that's all it is. It's an invitation. So, so it's like, like I, if I think of my earthly father, like I love him so much. He's so cool, my dad. And I love just getting around him, asking him questions, you know, all these different things, you know, just anything, you know. So if I don't see something, if I see in something that I'm believing for, but I don't see it, then what do I do? I go to the Father. So what's so bad about going to the Father? Going to the Father is great. You see what I'm saying? It's not, it's not a horrible thing to have to go to the Father and say, Father, I want faith for this area. I want faith. And he can do anything with someone who would just reach out. That's the whole thing. J just, would you just reach out in faith? Because God can't do anything, you know, where it's someone who just says, I just don't want to have faith for that. I don't want to. I don't want to obey. I don't want. I don't even want to try to hear the Holy Spirit. See what I'm saying? I don't even want to hear the Holy Spirit's voice on that. That's not really a big deal to me. Well, it's just that nothing's going to happen. So, so here's, here's the thing. Did the Holy Spirit tell me to pray for the old man in front of me after I prayed for Miss Naomi? Did he tell me to pray for the old man and the lady with the back? Not at all. But my heart did. The compassion in my heart because I was like, wow, I want to see what's going on. I love to pray for people. I believe prayer works. So it caused me to step outside of myself and do it more and more and more. You know, I, I like like I, like there's some things I got to get over, but the Lord is stripping me. You know, um, um, I, I, I laugh at, at Claudia, um, her boldness when we're just around people. She does not care who it is. I've been in situations where I'm like, whoa. She doesn't care who's around. She will say Jesus loud and proud, and it doesn't matter, and this is my pastor, and I'm just like, wow, you know? And, you know, and, and, you know no, I'm, I'm just saying, I got to get over some things, you know? Come to my church. I'm like, like, she doesn't even say, oh, you know what? We have a great, no, she goes, Come to my church. Will you come to my church? And I'm like, whoa. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's so cool, you know? Pastor Prince, he has no fear of people. I mean, I've been with him in multiple situations. He doesn't have any fear of people. He'll just go up to someone and start talking to him. I'm like, man, that's awesome. It's so good. He just, he doesn't care. He'll just go up to him and say, hey, man, what's going on? <laughs> that's the hardest part, you know? But it's just loving people, caring for people and stepping out. Now I don't want to. I don't want to start preaching. Let's let's go to the scripture. These signs will follow them that what believe in my name. They will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Listen, um, I want to give this to you guys because um, I'm sure it, you might have um, 
thought about this. You can do your own research on this. This is really good to know because um, this translation is a little wacky here that they shall take up serpents and, and, and uh, they shall take up serpents and nothing will happen to them. That Greek word, you look it up for yourself. You look up that word. It's the word ophis. And it means, listen, listen to the meaning of what it means. It means through the idea of sharpness of vision. Now, let me, I'm going to explain this to you. It says a snake figuratively as a type of sly cunning, an artful, malicious person, especially Satan. Okay, so so what he's saying here, check this out. It's not it's not talking about physical snakes. It's talking about that you will have the perception to see the enemy's trickery and, and, and all that. It says these signs will follow them that believe. You will be able to see the trickery of the enemy. You will be able to have vision for the, sh you will have sharpness of vision for the trickery of the enemy. Isn't that good? And he said, if you drink any deadly thing, you know what that means? Listen, it, it means this, it, 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 where it says it will not hurt you. That What it really saying is a, it's a figurative, the, the word, uh, beber, and it's like a Spanish word. The, the Latin word is like, it's the same sort of thing. You can look it up for yourself, but it means when you partake of. So here's the thing. If you partake of something that where the enemy has set up and everything, it says this. He said, these signs will follow them that believe. He goes, if you drink of it, which means if you partake of that, he says, it will not hinder you. It will not hinder you. So which falls in line with no weapon formed against you will prosper. Amen. So those translations are really not that great. You have to look it up. Go to your strongs. You look up those words for yourself. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. So first of all, you'll have vision for the trickery of the enemy. Those signs will follow the God's believers. And here's the thing. If you find yourself where you, where you drank of something that, that you were just like, whoa, wait a minute here and, and stuff, and you didn't know, God says it won't hinder you. That's good. That's good right there. But, let, but I just wanted to give you that. That's a freebie. But listen. And so they shall take up serpents. They shall drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Listen. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. And they, listen, they went forth and they preached everywhere. They went forth and they preached everywhere, the Lord working with them. And what is it that he confirmed? He confirmed the word. He confirmed the word. They went out. He worked with them. And he confirmed the word. He confirmed the word. His job is to confirm the word. We have to speak the word of God. They went out. So as I do this more and more, when I step out in faith, what if they look at me? What's the, what did I lose if I meet someone and they look at me like I'm crazy? What did I really lose? A little bit of dignity maybe? I don't know. Maybe some laugh, somebody laughing at me. You know, an opportunity to crucify the flesh. Okay? So... The Lord was working with them. We are partnering. Listen, we are partnering with God. The greatest miracle that could take place is that we would even have the desire to lay hands on people. That we would have the desire to say, when we wake up in the morning, say, Lord, what can I do with you today? What can I do? What can we partner with today? We Listen, guys, our church is going to be transformed. Yes. We are not staying within the walls of our church. Amen. We are not going to get hung up on titles, mm -hmm. all that silliness, real ministry at New Dawn Christian Village. There's going to be way more ministry outside than on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Way more. We are not going to get hung up with a building. We can't. It was never God's intention. We have to step out and minister to people. Just love on people. How exciting that it, that it is to just pray with people. 
Nobody was unhappy with me today when I prayed for them. Nobody was sad. Nobody was like, you know, you freak. Yesterday, I'm notorious for this, but Sister Joanne, when she goes out of town, I go, I go to have breakfast because she can't make me breakfast. So I don't have like a good breakfast, so I'm going to have to go out and get a good breakfast. <laughs> so I went to Hoff's. Hoff's Hoff's Bakery, whatever. Hoff's Restaurant. Restaurant. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yes. yes. Yeah. I go sit there. I go sit there. And I'm sitting there eating, you know, order my stuff. And I see a lady. And she's limping, but I notice that she grabs her back. Like she grabs her back. She has a brace on her ankle. And I felt a draw to, to, to the back part, even though she had a brace on the ankle. And so Pastor Greg, we just happened to be on the phone, and I had, I had started the phone call when I was at home. So we were still talking in the restaurant. I was like, hey, man, I said, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat while we're talking. He's like, I don't care. So we're talking and everything. And all of a sudden, she walks by to go to the bathroom. I said, excuse me. Uh, you know, I said, I said, do you speak Spanish? She said, yeah. She was like, like this, you know. And I said, I said, hey, I said, I believe in prayer. I said, your back's bothering you, right? I said, is your back bothering you? She goes, yeah. I said, well, can I pray for you? Can I please pray for you? You know? And she said, okay. Like, she was like nervous, but okay. I said, right. well, can I hold your hand? I said, take my hand. Man, when I was done praying with her, she smiled so big. Yeah. She said, thank you. And I said, God is good, isn't he? And she said, yes, he is. You know, Amen. so so but but you see, like when you step out, uh -huh. when you step out, just step out, just step out. What's the worst that can happen? No, get away with, from me. OK. Hey, God loves you. I'm going to still stay on my phone call. Yeah. I told Pastor, Pastor Greg was on the phone. I said, hey, hold on a second, you know, and everything. Pray, prayed for the prayed for the lady, you know, just step out in love. It's really stepping out in love. Yeah. That's all it is. It's not even I'm not even thinking faith. I'm just stepping out in love. I'm not like Shararabasokor. I'm like I'm not like okay, here we go. Here comes a fire. I'm not. I'm not thinking like that. I just my heart is like wow, this lady's in pain. Let me pray for her because Jesus is a healer. Amen. That's now, it. Yes. There are so many people that are out there hurting, and the move of God would have His people, the church, to be out in the highways and the hedges. Mm. Wow. Wow. I can see you down out there in the highways and the Yeah. Man, man hands on Do you know do you know what my faith has turned to? That I'm I don't mind verbalizing it so you guys can even pray for me. Um but this is where my faith is going. So so yeah, stepping out like all this I'm we're doing this study, so I'm like, man, I'm gonna step out in this stuff, you know. We're doing this how many weeks now? Three, you know? So we're stepping out. And so, but what's, what's on my heart is the Lord is, is challenging me. He said, will you believe me for my presence? So meaning, so, so now I have a vision in my head where I'm going to start going to people and I'm going to say, hey, listen, I said, you know, I said, How, how's your relationship with God? And if they say, well, I don't believe in God. I said, well, can, can I ask you a favor? I said, will you give me 20 seconds? That's it. I said, if I take your hand and you feel the power of God, will, will you give your heart to God if you feel something? That's where my faith is at now. Now my faith is being stretched, not just for healing, but now I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe like that. What's that? Was it Linus who had the cloudy, the dirty cloud around him everywhere he went? Well, I'm going to pray for the glory to be on me. That's what I'm, I see. I see. I, wanna, I want the glory so that people can feel the glory of God, that they can sense his presence, you know? Pig pen. Oh, was it pig pen? <laughs> pig pen. All right. So I don't know. Vitus had the blanket, okay. So, <laughs> so you know, but, but that's where my faith is at today, in prayer. I was like, okay, I'm going to continue to press into healing, but I'm, now my faith has gone to another level. It says, will you, well, God's like, will you believe me that, that, your, that my presence will be on you? Will you fight for my presence so that people would come to know God? Mm. Like, yeah, mm. that's cool. There's nothing scary or... Whatever, it, all it is, is once again, go into the Father. It's go into the Father. 
It's not like a, a horrible formula of just like, oh, I'm going to have to do this and I have to go to Bible school. I have to do all. No, I just have to go be with the Father. That's all I have to do is just be with the Father. Amen? Amen. So, so the Lord was working with them and he confirmed the word with signs following. So he confirmed the word. So listen, speak the word. Let the Holy Spirit do his job. You speak, your job is to speak the word. The Holy Spirit's job is to confirm the word. The signs will follow the word and the signs will follow faith. But it's about, but at the end of the day, listen, do you know, do you know what this, these studies are about? It's about a baptism of love. That God will fill our hearts with compassion. One of the greatest stories, the thoughts or the revelations that God gave me was when John the Baptist, when he was decapitated, they, took, they chopped his head off. That was Jesus' cousin. He loved John. He was the forerunner. And Jesus goes up to pray. He's sad about the whole situation just happened. But a crowd came and followed him. He didn't shush them away. In the middle of his grieving, he stopped. And he prayed for everyone, and they were all healed. <clears throat> it's so awesome. Amen? Amen. That's so good. So I was going to give you, you know, one more point, but we're going we're gonna to pray. And so um, he says the Lord was working with them. If you could just picture the Lord working with you. The Lord is working with you. So you are... His solution on the earth. You, he is working with you. He's, he's looking for people too that would just say, would you, would you be available? He's looking for them. And he's willing to pour out his spirit for those that are hungry for that. So, Pastor Prince, can we sh show that quick video real quick? This is actually part of your homework assignment for, for next week. <clears throat> and um, this is real powerful. I thank, I thank God for Melody that she sent this to me. Uh, it's extremely, extremely powerful. So uh, all you have to do is press play with the volume up and all that. Walmart. There's a there's a thing in the shopping cart. I know in many churches that I used to sign. You gotta listen good. We see the very early Christians, the very early disciples of Christ. They were living this lifestyle of the disciples. They were reaching people in their homes, on the streets. They met people where they were at. And the gospel was exploding. It was spreading to the entire world. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people came to faith in Jesus Christ. They were baptized and received the Holy Spirit. But at one point in church history, we see that Christianity was institutionalized. And soon after, it became a state religion. This hierarchy, this institutionalized church was following us all the way to the Reformation when Luther came, Calvin came, Swinney came. They were trying to reform, they were trying to bring us back to the real gospel, back to the book of Acts. Yeah. But they failed. We still have the building. We still have the special priesthood. We still have people meeting in special buildings on special days with a hierarchy and people trying to bring offerings to the church so they could gain the favor of God. Luther did not succeed in bringing the church back to what we read in the book of Acts. The Bible is the book of life, and it doesn't become the book of life by studying it. It becomes the book of life by living it. 
Try to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, if you have any um yeah, if you guys have any questions about it, I want to discuss it cuz it's it's extremely powerful. And I mean, it's just stuff on there. There was there was one healing I was looking for. I thought it was there. You're going to see just re just remember the the healings in Times Square. Uh just, you know, for me what gets me is the like so for example, the Asian girl, did you see her face? Like that, like makes me cry almost every single time because you just see that she's just like, holy smokes! I I completely like I felt that, you know, like I'm I'm healed, you know. It's just incredible. So, so the thing is, is just yeah. And it's not about. I just wanna. These are the things like I want to talk about. So you heard that pastor, right? That he's saying he read the book of Acts and he saw all this stuff, but he just said he'd never seen it. He'd never he'd never see that stuff, and. Um, and so the thing, the thing, if you say, well, Pastor, well, what does this look like for you at New Dawn? It's not about, it's not about this in our service. It's about us being disciples of Jesus Christ and being the disciples that all the way around, not just, not just healing, but love, you know, respect, character, you know, uh, servanthood giving, you know, all the attributes of Jesus, but we can't deny also his power. Mm -hmm. And so that's the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just trying to say, okay, well, this is, we want the services to just go in this direction. It's not about the service. And that's what I'm going to have to try to drill and drill and drill. It's not about the service. I'm not thinking about our building. I'm thinking about us as believers, you know, because there's joy to live out, like what he said, you know, the, the, he, you know, the word is, uh, 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 what, how did he say it? The word is living or, or whatever, or, or no, he said, he said, everyone says the word, everyone listens to the word, but we don't live, if we, we don't live, it, if we hear it. Well, it's not just meant to be was the word of life, but it's not the word of life. We, it's living it that is the, the, the life. Yeah. yeah. The Bible is the book of it. life, but not by studying it, by living it. There you go. There you I go. I like that line, so I wrote but, it. But that's what I mean. So, so for example, I really, I really am absolutely 1,000% convinced that a lot of us, we, there's a lot of times we don't have joy in our life mm -hmm. because we're actually such a subpar uh, person of what God always intended us to be, the fullness mm -hmm. of, of Him. You see what I'm saying? Amen. It's like like we find ourselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you in a second. But the, we find ourselves like trying to seek so much stuff out, and none of that. It's just it just doesn't matter. But when you when you step into like who you are as a son and daughter, it's like it's life. It's like I I'm not going to lie. I'm happy today, like happy and glowing, because I prayed for three people today. Like, that's how I feel. I feel fulfilled because I actually let him work through me. You see what I'm saying? I didn't just feed on him. I let him work through me. So I feel great today. I feel faith. I, I feel, you know, even when we walked in, it's like, you know, it didn't matter to me that there was a little bit of people when we first walked in. You know, it didn't, none of that mattered because I feel full, you know, with, with, with what he's doing and and you let me tell you something you're not going to be able to watch that without being like holy smokes i mean it's just it's crazy it's you got like demons being cast out too and stuff. oh yes yeah. but just the boldness the Don't boldness of just else. yeah <laughs> <laughs> no spot go, go ahead ladonna well like what you're talking about that fullness i saw that in the beginning with the guy who healed a lady and she was saying how she was walking slow mm -hmm. He was the guy, he right? Was he, crying, he was the guy who prayed for her. But he was crying. Right. <laughs> I mean, he experienced something. Right? Yeah. In, in praying for her, he had it was he it wasn't just her that got something. Yeah. He experienced something because he was crying. Right. He was totally crying. That to me is like what you're talking about. That fullness. It's 
Right. It's not just the other person. We mm. experience something too as someone who's walking yeah, in that But it's on. But it's on. Like the, like the, once again, it's it's completely. We have to keep circling it, circling it, circling it till it becomes culture in our church. But but this is what I'm saying to you. It's not just about healing or power. Like rah 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 rah. It's not about that. It's about being the the letting the fullness of God be in your life. You know. So with the same with the same attitude that I attack saying, God, I want to, um, I want to pray for the sick. There's, there, th with the same fervency, I, I want to be a better husband to Joanne. You know, I want to love my wife. I want to, I, I want to uh, grow old with her and be happy and be respectful and be, you know, all these different things. You know, it's the fullness of God. But, but many times, but here's the thing, we, we hide so much behind a lot of the works that don't involve me pressing into heavy faith for something. We rely, so, so we touch the parts of Jesus that it's like, okay, well, I can, I can write the check for my offering. That doesn't require that much faith. You know what I'm saying? I have money in the account. You know what I'm saying? I can hold the door open for somebody. I could be kind, all this stuff. But when it comes to the supernatural, where God is working through you, we, that, those are the things that, well, I do enough for God. And, and, and I, I think what God is saying, it's not about doing enough for him, but you're just not being the real you. You're really not being the real you. You're just not. Yes, Pastor Prince. A lot of us are struggling with an identity crisis, not knowing who we really are. That's why we're being imposed by other uh, cultures, other movements. Like, for instance, you go down the street, you see these brothers sagging. They don't care about what you think. It's their culture, and they're going to expose that on you. We're supposed to be the type that have a culture of Christ. We're Christ-like. Where we go into a dark area, it's supposed to light up. Darkness is supposed to flee. We're supposed to have that power where we're looked at as a threat. Oh, here they come. Let's get out of here. Right. You know, the boldness that we're supposed to have Christ-like is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we should be walking in that identity. With I'll tell you this, you want to get real? If we just did church and we, we were only going to do church and just do like Sunday services, do church, like that's, that's what's so exciting about New Dawn, I would kid you not, I would quit and then I would just rather just hit the streets on my own, go get a regular job, just hit the streets, love on people, and I'll be more effective doing that having a secular job than I would pastoring this church and just mm. cool music, you know, oh, that was a good video. And I'm, I'm not, we have great things going on. The Holy Spirit's moving. I'm not, I'm not, but you see what I'm saying? It's like, that's, I want to live the full life of the gospel. You know, I want to be a real disciple of Jesus. A real, a real yes. I just want to share and identify um, what you said about writing checks. Bringing me what I got when I, those same words when I thought I was doing so good. I was doing the best in my Christian walk I'd ever done. In 1995, I have a 12 year old son and he died and I was at my best. I was clean and sober. I've been clean and sober. I'm seven years clean. Why would you do this now? And that's the only question I had is why God? Why now? Why this? And that is exactly what he spoke in regards to stop bringing me your lame, your leftovers, your seconds, your bruise. What he said is bring me your best and your check, because I thought I'm doing good because I'm making money now and I'm writing big checks, right? Bring me your best. Your best is where I am. And that's mm. why I hear you guys saying, identifying what he's called you to be, what he wants you to yeah. be, where he empowers you to live. Bring, mm. that's why. Glorify the Lord. That was the answer. Yeah. I had a dream and he was laying in a bed, my son Sean. And in his head, back in the day, they had haircuts with the words in the ear. Yeah. The haircut said, glorify the Lord. To me, that was God answering. I had one question. I need you to tell me why, Lord. Why mm. this? Why now? He had a haircut. Mm. Wow. You ever had one of those experiences out of body? I'm not mm. sleep. This can't be. Right. Glorify the Lord. Sean said. 
Mm. Glorify the Lord. That's why, Sharon, because you could stop making excuses because Sean had cerebral palsy. So that was my excuse when I didn't want to show up and serve. Mm -hmm. Wow. Anybody follow me? Mm. Yeah. When, I, when I needed an excuse, I had an yes. excuse. Yes. Wow. I got to stay home, Sean. Sean's mm. not doing well. Yeah. I had an excuse. God said, that's why. He ain't your excuse no more. And you can mm -hmm. stop writing your checks and thinking you okay. You're doing so good now. Mm -hmm. No, wow. you're not. Bring me your best. And come mm -hmm. all the way in. Stop standing at the gate. Come all the way in. Wow. Yes. That's what I identify with when you said what you said about the check. Amen. I, I will I will tell you guys, I you, you I think you should do an experiment. This is not your homework. Your homework is to watch the movie. So I'm gonna send it to you guys. I would just challenge you to do an experiment the next time that you're really totally in the dumps or fearful or whatever. Get in your car and just go somewhere and just get out and just pray for one person. And you tell me if you really will feel the same way you did before you left the house. You won't. Wow. Yeah. You just won't. You just won't. And I so. I turned on a thousand times. I'm going to stop, I promise. I turned on a thousand times looking for high, 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 high. I've known no high like the servanthood. I've. Fry some chicken. You got a church thing going on. Them hot dogs we do, mm -hmm. you don't know the high I get right. doing them hot dogs, shopping, just in those. Somebody might not think much of that. That's, I do. That's servanthood, okay? <laughs> I have found a new high that doesn't compare to no high, and that's when I'm serving. Amen. 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 That's it. Amen. That's it. So, so the thing is, is. All right, Deacon. <laughs> And how about that same person, you know, because I know, I know the, we got to be careful with the definition of love because love, you know, we, we just start getting into the emotional huggy, nice, being nice to someone. But, you know, but what if, how about this? So if they, if they know that we belong to him because we love one another, how about this? But would they be able to see that we believe the word because if they, do they see any signs following us? You know, do they see any signs following our life? You know, so yeah, yeah, I'm a Christ follower. You know, and, and unfortunately, the, the, the attachment to that is church. We just look at that by church. That's it. So like, oh yeah, they go to church. Okay, so like, like is that, is that like, like, especially after you watch something like that, is that really how you want to be identified? Like, is that really the... The whole thing. I mean, I love our church. I, we're gonna, we're gonna continue to expand and grow and have influence and and all those different things. But the real deal, like, is absolute. Like, I, I, I was I telling Melody. I think I was telling Melody. I don't know who I was telling, but I'm, if it might have been Melody. I turned on a video from this church in Florida. And. I just growing so fast, huge church. And they had Beyonce. It wasn't the real Beyonce, but it looked just like her. <laughs> dressed in her tight thing, the, the whole bathing suit bottom thing that she does. Singing her song. Because the whole month was like they do these, these uh, themes. You know, like they, they just use like, they'll use like a superhero movie to talk about God's power and how he did miracles and stuff but it, they had beyond i'm literally watching her do the whole thing they another video they had that guy who sang that song gangnam style whatever and there's a sort that about that you're too sexy type thing and they literally kept that in the song as they were doing this dance on in a church and i looked at the multi-million dollar lighting and the multi multi-million dollar sound and the facility and i was like I would never trade what I'm receiving right now to switch for that. I never would. I never I would I never would do that. 
I never, I would never even do that. Like to, if, if I had to do that with the way they do it forever, never, no way. I would never do that. I would, I'd rather just, you know, because I want to live in the fullness of, of, of God, the fullness of, of who he is in the spirit. And I'm, I'm not trying to knock, you know, that could be a great entrance door church, you know, where people get saved and come in, you know, but you can't stay there. You can't sustain the show, yeah, you know, performance. the performance. Yeah. It's got to be led by the spirit, led by precious Holy Spirit. It's, it's got to be that. It's like that's where real fulfillment just comes, you know. So, so amen. 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 Yeah. amen. Yeah. amen. Well let's, well, let's have faith, man. You know, Mel, come. Come, Mel. Come stand right here in the middle. I'm going to take this mic off so I can just move around. Amen. You're the great physician, Father. So, Lord, I don't, I can't even remember all the different things, whether her her waist was out of whack, Lord, discs, Lord, God, muscle buildup and pain. But, Lord, I just, I just speak a release you, right now, just from Thank all, you, from all the pain and that no discs would be touching you, each Lord. other right now, Father. I ask you, Lord, that no discs would be touching, Lord. God, if there's a, if our spine is out of alignment, we thank you right now, thank alignment, you, Father. We ask you, Father, and we thank you, Father. We, we speak, Lord, to her hips to be perfectly aligned, her legs to be aligned. Jesus' name, I speak to all the muscles in her back that right now you just loosen up and relax. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. And Father, we, 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 as a church, Lord, we just come in faith, and we also say we don't want this to return on her. In the name of Jesus, we break every cord of the enemy, every generational attachment to this. Lord, we just we take authority right now. In the name of Jesus, we just take authority over this, Lord, right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right now. Name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus covers you. The blood, the bloodline. Right now, stained red with the blood of Christ in Jesus' name. And nothing will by any means hurt you in the name of Jesus right now. Jesus, we give you the glory. Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory, Jesus. Thank you, 